Hello, my name is Daniel Johan. I'm going to talk about layer approach kernel structure. So what does a layer approach do? It allows operating system to be broken down into smaller or multiple layers. It also allows control over computers and applications. Data structure or operations can also be hidden inside each layer which is defined by the programmer. So about the layers in the layer approach. Operating system is broken down into a number of layers, which is pretty box spoken earlier. So the lowest layer layer in the system is the hardware, which, which is layer ID equals to zero. The the highest level layer in the system is the user interface, which can be infinite infinite or an unknown number. High level layers can only use operations at lower level layers. For example, like Layer 2 can only use operations provided by layer 1. Meanwhile, layer 1 can only use operations provided by layer 0. So in, in a mathematical term, it will be layer n can only use operations provided by layer n minus 1. A simple structure to under, for the lower level layers, where the la la you can see the layer 0 is the hardware. And meanwhile, there are other layers after it, which is the kernel or the software layers. A more complex diagram here, shown here, is where both layers are present, which is the lower layer and the high level, higher level layer. So in the lower layer, you can see the hardware and all the NT kernels and the NT executive, with all, all the NT softwares. Meanwhile, the high level is where all the user software and applications which is a library of, which could be library, subsystem, process, and so on. Lastly, we shall talk about the advantage and disadvantage. Advantage of layer approach is where programmers can, sim can simply construct and debug all the, all the layers in, in the layer structure. And data structure can be hidden in any layers. The difficulty of layer approach is that lower, layer, lower level layers must be carefully planned. If not planned properly, there is a chance that the lower, la lower level layers may crash and, well, and the results in stopping all the functions at the higher level layers. Defining those layers could also be a difficulty and a challenge to those programmers, especially when it comes to organizing your layers. Disadvantage of layer approach is where it tends to be less efficient than other implementations. In other words, it will be a slower performance. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on to my other colleagues, where they will talk talk, talk about the comparison between layer kernel and other kernels. So, so I'm gonna present about uh, layered versus monolithic kernels. Layered kernels are mostly uh, where the functionalities are arranged in layers, and each layer is treated as a black box. One such example is Maltix, which has eight layers formed into protection rings where they are arranged by their privilege and the boundaries are only be crossed using specialized instructions. As for monolithic, layer, uh, monolithic kernels, they are every, most of the functionalities are in the kernel space, mostly all in the kernel space, and uh, the, the ancient ones such as CPM and DOS they are basically designed that way, whereas uh, modern uh, kernels such as Linux, the Linux kernel and the Windows NT kernel, they have mostly evolved into hybrid kernels. So we'll begin by going into performance. Monolithic kernels have better performance than layered kernel. Programs in the user space are able to communicate with the processors directly in the monolithic kernel. Uh, as for a layered kernel, because they are layers and each layer is black box, therefore they they have to do special message passing, which incurs overhead. And as for stability, both of them have the same stability, because crashes in the user space, although it might not affect the kernel, but if it if the crash occurs in kernel space, it might bring down the entire kernel. As for debugging and maintenance, monolithic kernels are harder to debug and maintain as there is no separation of system processes in the kernel. 
uh, debugging the kernel requires knowledge of all the processes in the kernel, in the monolithic kernel. In contrast, debugging in the layered kernel is only concerned with the layer involved since each layer is treated as a black box. So, but also because of that, um, it actually takes time to fix because you have to start from the low from the from the lowest layer, which is from hardware, and go all the way up, which literally takes time. Uh, lastly, is enhancements. Uh, both are hard to enhance because enhancements made in a monolithic kernel requires massive restructuring in the kernel. The layered kernel is also hard to enhance because of the dependency in the layers which makes it hard to implement the extra functionality or enhancements if it requires functionality from different layers uh, due to the dependencies. So that's about it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wong Zhenwei and I will talk about the difference between layer approach and microkernel. Now I will be talking about the, their performance. For layer approach, it has poor performance because it depends on the number of layer. The more the layer, the more indirection from function to function and the bigger the overhead in function calls. Uh, layer approach also poor in performance because of the protection boundary crossing, which means each layer is given access only to the lower level interface. For microkernel, it has poor performance as well. This is because of the increased system overhead due to the communication between user space and kernel space. Microkernel also has a bound protect protection boundary crossing, which will affect their, the performance. Now I'll be talking about their stability. For layer approach, it has poor stability because it depends on the layer which crash. Because if a lower if a layer crash, all the layer above the layer which crash will be unusable. So if a lower if a lower layer is crash, that means the upper layer all cannot use. So and for microkernel, it has good security it has good stability because it, some codes are separated to kernel space and user space. And if the code is user space is crashed, it won't affect the kernel space. And for microkernel, it, is, it has good stability also because of the protection boundary crossing, which will affect its performance. Now I'll be talking about debugging and maintenance. For layer approach, it is easy to detect bug, but it takes time to debug. This is because layer approach, they debug from lowest level and look for bug from layer to layer. And for microkernel, it is easy to maintain because it has smaller kernel and easy to, easier to tune and customize. But for microkernel, it is hard to debug because it has a very complex source code. Now I'll be talking about the enhancement. For layer approach, it is hard to enhance because layer approach it requires uh, other functionality from the different layer to enhance. And for microkernel, it is hard to enhance as well. For, this is because microkernel it its source code is complex and it requires a proper optimization to enhance it. In conclusion, the performance of a layer approach is poor due to the dependency of number of layer. And microkernel is poor at its performance as well due to the system overhead. And for the stability, a layer approach is poor because of the dependencies of layer which crash and while microkernel is more stable due to the separation of code. For layer approach, it is better at debugging, but it takes time. And microkernel, it is better at maintenance, but microkernel is hard to debug. Lastly, for enhancement, both layer approach and microkernel are hard to enhance due to different reasons. 
for lay approach it is it require the functionality from different layer and micro kernel require proper optimization hello again i'm going to talk about the comparison between layer kernel and, and modular kernel in terms of performance layer kernel is slower compared to modular kernel why because high level higher level layer in the layer kernel requires a lot of overheads and passing if they want if they ever wanted to use a lower level layer in the system the more layer it gets the more slower the system is meanwhile in modular kernel mo module can directly access to other modules easily through the core kernel you don't really have to pass through any you still need to pass but only once or twice in terms of stability in layer kernel if the higher level layer crash it will not affect the lower layer but if the lower layer crash the high level layer will be unusable in terms of security high level layers require permission to pass through other lower layers which which creates stability and also restriction towards high level layers meanwhile in modular kernel all the modules have full permission and access to each other due to this it may or may not crash the kernel if the module consists of bad codes so in term of, so instability to compare which is more stable layer kernel has better stability compared to module modu modular kernel next we move on to debugging and maintenance in layer kernel it can be debugged easily based on the targeted layers only but in order to debug you need to start from the first layer to the top although it's a sim it's a simple concept but will take more longer time Meanwhile, in modular kernel, it only, it's also the same as layered kernel, which is you only can you only debug based on the targeted modules only. But to debug the module, to to find the bug, you have to you have to at least uh, search manually in each module to find the proper to find the error inside. It. Which in other which is other words, it will be a bit complex. So both kernel can be easily debugged and maintained. Next, in enhancements of kernels, in layer kernels, you can add new layers easily without recompiling the whole system. You only need to recompile the newly added layers. The problem is that to organize the those new layers in the layer system, which make it harder and more complex, depending on the design of the layer. Meanwhile, in modular kernel, you can add new modules easily without recompiling the whole system, same as layered kernel. But in terms of organizing, the core kernel will handle that part. So it will be easier, it will be easier and more portable, in other words. Both kernel can, but in conclusion, both kernels can add new new functions easily. The, only the implement implementations will make it harder. So in conclusion, for for layer versus modular, both la both layer can be simply debugged and maintained, but layer kernel will take a longer time compared to modular kernel. Layer kernel has better stability in terms of security due to its hidden data functionality and layer security. Modular kernel has better performance since it can access modules directly without delay. Layer and and lastly, layer and modular kernel can add or design new layers or modules, but layer kernel is harder to implement its new la layers due to planning and organizing rather than modular kernel.